All right, guys. So welcome to our NB module advice and slash Q&A session. My name, as you guys probably know, is Kishore. And on this kind of advice slash Q&A panel, we have Priya and Taisha. Um, you guys have met them. And I want to make sure that you guys know that we're all T4s, we all got through NB, and I just want to provide that level of assurance that although this module is one of the more abstract and difficult modules, it is something that you can definitely get through and do well in. So as always, let's get the ball rolling. Okay, so first things first, uh, we run, here's the TPLG, a group of us. And um, it's a great page. We have a lot of resources and feel free to scan this QR code, not to rate my professional behavior today, but to um, get access to our Facebook group and eventually our drive that's on there. Um, we have a lot of good resources for NB. It's helpful. Um, I used a couple of them myself when I was going through NB back in what feels like a lifetime ago because we're in term four um, and it's really, really, um, Nice. And we have some practice questions too, IMCQs, all sorts of things that can guide your thought process. All right. So NB is a big module and I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's one of the longer modules that you have to kind of trek through. First thing you have to know that this is uh, three weeks each. So NB1, right? It's going to primarily cover nerves, tracks, and the spinal pathways associated with um, everything, as well as a little bit of gross anatomy of the brain. You guys have probably started covering a lot of that already. You probably had your first IMQ, IMCQ sessions, which rattled your cages. I know I was there because I was the same way. Don't even, don't even trip. Um, NB2 is a little bit more focused. I personally liked NB2 a lot more, even though I did just as fine in NB1. NB2 really focuses on the facial nerves, the brain, um, what, you know, accessory muscles that you might use to, you know, do respiration. It, there's a lot of different components involved with NB2. I personally found it a little bit more focused than NB1. Uh, I just felt like the organization got a lot better. NB3 was like my favorite child. Like, let's, let's just get this out of the way. Like the professors who teach NB3 just, just golden, just, I don't know, ascended from heaven. Like, I don't know, like they're just amazing. Um, as always, it's a three week module. Don't honestly sleep on NB3 guys. Um, although it might feel like a very soft science, you just have to memorize a couple of facts. It was one of the more challenging modules for me because it is a little bit more abstract out there. Okay. So don't, don't worry. It's definitely feasible and you're going to still do great. Um, just make sure you focus in on a couple of points that I'm going to outline when we get to the advice panel, okay? Um, and guess what? B-S-C-E. Yes, dreaded three-letter words, uh, three letters that every med student has to hear um, as they're getting to the tail end of their year one at SGU. So it's a culminative examination of your term one and term two material. It is a bit challenging. Um, I'm not going to lie because you're like, you're like, I just got out of NB. I don't need to be traumatized again by CPR. Like, I don't want to go back and look at all those, all those things. And guess what? You have to learn it again. And guess what? They're going to make you learn it again in term four. And guess what? That's what we're doing right now and crying about it. Okay. Moving right along. Um, the general approach that I always had for NB was you have to learn the tracks and the lesions and the presentation of the disorders very thoroughly because they can ask you at every structural level where any sort of presentation appears. For example, let's say you have a lesion in your dorsal column medial lemniscus pathway. Like what part of the spinal cord could be messed up at the lower point or at the upper point and how like, does it affect the upper limbs, lower limbs? So they, they can be that specific with the questions. Of course, you can, you have some general algorithms to keep that information consolidated and easier to digest and eventually do well on the exams. But I would learn it from top to bottom, which is something I feel like SU has a more 
just to be politically correct, more of a weak spot on because the organization for this module tends to be a little difficult to understand because they take slices of the brain and then they tell you like, this is the thing that happens here. This is the thing that happens here. And it's like a whole myriad of things that are happening at the, let's say at the medullary ponds. And you're like, how do I put this together? So what I did when I went through NB was learn the pathways from top to bottom, right? Like if it's an ascending pathway, I started at like the one little spot on my like arm and then saw like where it could go. Like, where does it go? Where does it cross over? And where does it ascend? Um, when you're going through that, make sure you kind of incorporate that. And we'll, we'll all give you the general, as well as like our individual approaches to NB1. NB2, oof. Cranial nerves for days, like know them, know those uh, Roman numerals, like the back of your hand, because I don't know why I just can't get Roman numerals straight in my head, like every single time that was my biggest challenge in NB2. I'm just kidding. Okay, like just stick with me NB NB2 is a lot of cranial nerves and the way cranial nerves are is that the surface area for your face is actually very limited, although like you know, some people are like, oh, you have a big face. Like, I don't feel offended. I'm just saying um, the area that you're working with is limited. So a lot of the pathways in terms of cranial nerves is um, going to be running in parallel with each other or together. So they jump around a bit and it can be difficult to understand in terms of like blood supply, lesions, and then anatomy. Okay. And B3. Sweet God, I made so many tables and it traumatized me about the, my Excel pages were thick, like four C's long. It's difficult to put it into words. Okay. Um, there was disorders. You have to know the diagnostic parameters, right? And they're very specific with those diagnostic parameters. Okay. It can't be like less than two weeks, then you can't diagnose them with bipolar. Like it, it's very, it's very tight and you have to make sure you are very specific with that as always you've got to know the drugs as to as well as when to prescribe them um, this is like a little preview in terms of what you will experience later on in SGU's curriculum especially when you're going into term four when we get full-blown drugs contraindications adverse exact like so many different things but that's a problem for another day okay honestly I'm going to tell you the truth because uh, I guess I swore on it. Um, BSEE prep, I kind of held off. But um, the nice thing is I was a PLG leader. And that's the reason I'm kind of doing this as well. And it helped a lot. It didn't, it didn't make sense at the time being. I was stressed a lot. My hair was falling out. It was a great time. Um, but I was literally pulling my hair out. It was not even a, a there, that was probably an NB3 diagnosis somewhere lying in there. But the OPLGs and AEP that you guys will be doing, a lot of the folks who are doing currently that are on the call, it's going to play a huge of role in helping you remember and apply a lot of the questions that you're going to see on BSEE. Because the BSEE isn't an impossible thing, but it's more so of how much time you dedicate to remembering a lot of the concepts that you covered in the past. And I'm, I'll give you guys a whole other spiel on BSEE prep later on, what I did, what I didn't do, what I wish I had done. Um, but that's a problem for another day. So we're going to jump right in because I know we're all trying to get out soon so we can study. Individual approaches, you guys feel free to ask us. I've kind of given you my spiel, so I'm going to take a pause and let Priya take the floor and tell her about, tell you guys about what her individual approach is. Um, so I, I really didn't prepare like, you know, like a, like a big whole lot for this, but basically how I kind of like went about doing like NB1 was like I took my own notes. Um, it, it kind of took like a little bit more time but um, it just like kind of helped solidify like everything because you guys will notice like, you know, the slides are so long. So I basically had like a big word doc um, and kind of put everything together into one like, you know, um, file um, in that one word doc. And um, so that way, like every day I would basically review like um, you guys have, you know, um, like like scans of the brain and stuff like that, where, you know, where the hippocampus is, where this is. So I basically like made like little, like, you know, pages and just kind of like blocked it out. And then every day I would keep reviewing, like, you know, like, okay, this is where this is. This is where the ascending track is. And, um, you know, what does it do? So kind of basically verbalize. Um, 
And then um, I did a lot of like, yeah, grace questions, IMCQ questions. I did them like, you know, at least um, probably like, I think two or three times. I know it's kind of a lot, like, well, the IMCQ is not the grace question. I try to get them at least like two times around. Um, and then yes, a lot of whiteboarding. I am a big fan of whiteboarding. So whiteboarding away, you know, I, I went through so many markers, like it's, it's not even funny. Um, and then um, just like a short, like NB2 was my favorite. I don't know why I did. It's like, I think, um, I don't know if um, Kishore, you put like the link in, but there was like this one website, I forget the name of it, um, that I literally kid you not, like every morning I wake up, I like, you know, go to that nerve and basically like verbalize like, okay, this is like, you know, this is what canal it goes through. Um, you know, where does it like, you know, um, like what phase is, uh, what part of the face is affected and just kind of go through that for each nerve. Um, Sometimes like in the beginning, I kind of like um, did it little by little. So like I would take three or four nerves and then, you know, the second day I would finish the rest of the nerves. And then as the exam time came closer, I would go through all the nerves um, every day. Um, and just like that is like ingrained in my head. Like that's the only way, but it was like, I enjoyed it because it kind of like made sense and you know, it, it was fun. So, but um, yeah. And then for NB3, um, I made my own tables because I kind of like, you know, I know like this is the information I have, so I won't miss anything. So that's why I kind of relied on my own tables. Again, it did take a bit of time, but um, it, it just helped me that way, um, just to kind of put everything together um, into one, you know, again, one doc. Um, and what I did was like, um, like for all the lectures, I would put it into one like um, page on, on Word. So um, I wouldn't put, like, I want to go beyond um, two pages for, you know, one, um, one lecture. I would put everything in one page. Um, so the word, like, the wording is, like, four points. Like, it's, like, really small. But again, at least I have everything on one, you know, one page. So, like, the one page, I think a lot of people might. So that's what I did for MB3 and MB2 as well. Um, yeah, and I just did like a lot of questions too. Like a lot of the drives, you know, I just got like got questions from there and kept doing those. Um, but yeah, I think like my weakest was MB1. Um, I didn't do it as hot as I wanted to, but again, I, it was still up there. But again, you know, I share Saisha and Kishore, like, you know, if you're aiming high, so like our, like, you know, lower, like, but we, we did good, we did good. But, um, but then as the like MB2, MB3, we did good. Um, so that's kind of like what I did. Um, it's just a lot of whiteboarding and just like reviewing material every day, um, like what you're weak on and just like use a little bit of your time to review like past lectures. Um, because like sometimes, um, oh, okay. And then BSC um, prep, a lot of people are asking that. So to be honest, like, um, like I did well, I ended up doing good on BSC. Like um, I don't know how, but like it, it obviously wasn't like stellar, but like what I wanted to get, I managed to get what I want, like, you know, the score I was aiming for. Um, I think I started about, hmm, that's hard to say, it's like way back when, I think probably like two or three weeks before, I think the actual exam. Um, and I, towards the end, you guys, you feel so burnt out. Um, so like, you know, sometimes I feel like I, I kind of got lazy and just did a few questions here and there. Um, but I was a, a PLG, um, like I held PLG session. So that helped as Kishore said that, that is a really great way of learning it. I specifically remember there's like one question I made in one of my PLG like sessions. It was that same exact question on the exam. So it was beautiful. It was like six more capture period and I still remember it. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, so definitely if you guys are PLG leaders, it's really helpful. Um, but I did a lot of like, um, there's like a lot of like um, drives going around, um, like pages going around on different drives that, you know, kind of put like everything consolidated together. I reviewed those, like I think I picked one or two, which I found nice and kind of went through all of those. Um, but yeah, I didn't like go back through like all my lectures like that. I didn't have time for that. And also I was like mentally drained by that. So um, yeah, so I think I started about like two or I think two or three weeks max, um, nothing more than that, because I still had to focus on, you know, the NB3 exam. Um, yeah, and just did a lot of questions there and um, you know, nothing much like really drastic, anything different I would have done, I think, but hopefully that helped. Um, but yeah, that's what I have to say. Like if anything, I'll like add something later for the ones. 
Okay, so you should take the floor because it's all yours and then we'll we'll open it up to, to even some more questions. Okay, so like the first things first, like for me is if something is not organized, I will just not understand it. Like, and I think that's something that as I think as med students, we need to just learn a little bit more. Like, I know you guys had Dr. Padia for DM and she is so organized. Like everything from what's tied at the last lecture is makes perfect sense from first. Now, NV1 is like a complete 180 of that. So the thing about NV is like we said that there are three different like mini modules in that, right? So the first one is completely like anatomy based. I would say 70% of it is anatomy based. 30% has to do with more like the path of something. NV2 is strictly path and using some concepts of anatomy, but it's mostly as an adjunct to it. NB3, it's all psych. And within NB, you have three different like methods like to approach something. So the thing what I, I think would be the best thing for NB1 and what I, looking back, I should have done more is understand like first the anatomy. And I know they keep telling you like, oh, like, don't worry by week two and three, like the anatomy will make sense. Yeah, I mean, like to some extent, yeah, that is very true. Like it, it will not click until, you know, when they're actually talking about the pathways. I think especially like in that first week, um, the, the best thing I would do is go, like I use something called Anatomy Zone on YouTube, where it's basically this guy goes over like a 3D module of like, all throughout like the anatomy, whether that be in terms of like the lobes or in terms of like a specific part of the brain and shows you kind of like a 3D module. Um, that I would focus on. The second thing that I highly, highly, highly recommend is something called zygotebody.com, which is basically like this kind of like, like a software where again, it's like a 3D module where you can see anything from blood supply to nerves, to muscle, to bones, and you can like add it, take it out. It, like for example, let's say if I'm focusing on the brain and I only wanna see the nerves, it'll show me all the nerves and I can do like a 360 view. So I can clearly see, oh, where is it starting? Yes, I see that, I will, I will respond to that. Um, clearly sees where it's starting, where it's ending. So it gives you a very good visual picture. So my biggest recommendation is first understand visually where things are starting and where things are ending. With that being said, before you even like they start with the pathways, understand, hey, if I took a cross section at the midbrain level, what would it look like? Forget about the pathways. Like don't even be like, is it coming from the anterior aspect or like the lateral aspect? If I just asked you, hey, what would draw me something, you know, at the cross section of like T3 level or L2 level? Like, what would that picture look like? And understand, hey, is this like a horn? Is this a ganglion? Like, what does that mean? Understand that. If you have that down, understanding the pathways is going to be much easier. That's something that I wish I did because I started with the pathways first and then I went to the cross section and SGU does the same way. But like I said, you guys are just in your first week. So maybe just like on the weekend be like, hey, let me look at, you know, what does the midbrain look like? What are these, you know, different areas at the spinal level? Or let me look more into like the brainstem, just a general overview. Um, but definitely anatomy is not something that I've always been very strong in. I've always thought that I was strong in it. Clearly not. Um, so definitely you know, so like I'll, I'll put this in the chat again, but on YouTube is something called Anatomy Zone. And the guy shows you the um, like 3D representation and the, um, and the website is called Zygote Body. I'll put that in the chat as well. Okay. So these are all just like basically softwares that allow you to see a 3D module. You can understand the anatomy. NB1 will be much easier to understand. Quick thing to also mention, I know they say this, in some lectures, I'm not gonna mention the professor, 
but they put something called blue slides and you'll know exactly what I mean when you see it. And they will say, don't worry about it. These are just supplemental info. Completely don't even, don't even listen to them. Read the blue slides. If you can understand the blue slides, you are golden. And the other, like, I'm also not someone that studies in a group, but I think for NB1, I found it very helpful with studying just one other person. Don't, don't do a group of two or three. Get one other person and talk about pathways or anatomy. That's it. NB2, I personally enjoyed much more than NB1, not only because it was organized, like in terms of professors, but organized in terms of what you're trying to understand. So, right, we're talking about all the, the nerves all the way from one to all the way to like 12 or whatever, right? So the, the thing that Priya was mentioning is called, U, um, I think, CN Utah Med. I believe it uses Adobe Flash for that to allow you to see like the whole software. So what it does, it, it shows you, let's say if I want to look at, you know, cranial nerve number five, right? So I'll click on it and it'll show me from like my starting point all the way to what ganglion it goes to and like my end point. So if you know that pathway, like you are solid, like how Priya said, I would do the same thing. Every day I wake up, be like, okay, what are the nerves that I want to cover today? And straight up like whiteboard every single day. Like I'm also not an Anki person, so I never used Anki cards a whiteboard for days, like every day. Okay. What are the ganglions involved? What is the nerve? Like, where is it going? Um, the, uh, so that is basically NB2. NB2 is basically all nerves understanding that path. Obviously, like there's some anatomy involved in that. Like you, you will have to know like, okay, you know, what is the nearest fossa, but those are things that are a little bit more intuitive, especially once you start understanding, oh, like obviously optic is going to, you know, be coming out from my eyes. Like it's, it's in the word itself too. Like a lot, my thing is a lot of the times you can understand what something is doing based on what's in the work. Um, you know, I just had, I do PLG as well. So I was telling my term one people, I was like, Hey, something like flexor or polysis did like, you know, profundus or whatever policies means of the thumb so not to not to like bring it back to like term um you know term one but a lot of the things have like their reason why they're named that way so it makes it much easier to understand what it's doing so that's um the second part of nb2 nb3 is completely different like these are all your psych disorders like Priya said, I started making tables, whether that be on anxiety disorders and, you know, all the different, because there's so many classifications. And I swear, I kid you not, guys, I think making a table is one of the best things you can do. Like, I know there's so many, like, drives out there that have made tables for you. And while that is a great resource to, to use and as a reference point, at the end of the day, you're going to learn much more if you make your own table, especially if it's like things that you might need more like help on, because some people like to make their tables very sparse and limited, while others like all the text that's possible. So just figuring out how much or how little information like you need. So I made all those tables. And fun fact is that because I really liked doing that in NB3, like that's how I study now like making tables for all the drugs and or medications. So anything from, you know, what are its symptoms to under what classification it comes under, or I don't, I don't remember, was contradictions one of them under the psych? I forget. But, you know, whatever works for you, I think tables are a great way. That's something that I did. In terms of BSC prep, hmm, okay, this is a tough one. Because like everyone else, I did PLG as well. And I was like, hey, okay, this is going to be much easier. I'm going to like do a PLG like every week. It's going to be easy, easy. And then like you guys all know, life just happens and you guys just get like no time whatsoever. I could, long story short, I couldn't do PLG every week. I basically did it like once a month. Um, 
so while PLGs do help, what I will say is if that is not possible, I don't care if there's an apocalypse outside or you need to go to a birthday party, like once a week, one hour, that's all I ask. One hour, review something, something big topic, whether that be, hey, let me just go over some muscles like real quick or, hey, you know, we weren't, we learned about the Krebs cycle. What was that again? Just one hour. Like that's all it takes. Like one hour a week. Just be like, okay, let me review this. Let me watch a video on this. Let me understand this. And don't worry so much about like the nitpicky details. Like if you remember the big picture, those details will start flooding back in. Also, I did not do the one hour a week. I probably did that like once, once DM hit, then I was like, okay, let me do one hour a week. And that was only sometimes. Uh, but yeah, definitely since, since NB hit, I was like, okay, you know what? I need to, I need to review something. So the last thing I will say is don't listen. Okay, let me put a little disclaimer on this because I feel like I'm going to get in trouble for saying this. Don't be like, here's what the upper term said. So that's just what's going to be it. Because why? Because I will tell you why. Because everyone told us, hey, you know what? For BSCE, it's going to be mostly coming from term two. Very little is going to come from term one. And guess what happened? It was a complete opposite. It was barely anything from term two, and all of it was from term one. So take it with a grain of salt. Like, you know, obviously they're your peers and they want the best for you. But at the end of the day, don't be so influenced as to like what other people are saying. You do your work, you put in the effort. And at the end of the day, like, it's, you know, it's just about you doing your best. And because SGU changes things like all the time. Sorry, that was really long, but I hope you guys got like good tidbits out of that. All right. So you guys got all of our perspectives on the module as well as BSCE. And, I, and I'll, tr we'll try to have another kind of quick session before y'all's BSCE to kind of go over some stuff in terms of what we did. Obviously, all of us kind of uh, crash course BSCE in a hot minute, um, like three weeks, four weeks before the uh, actual time when we were taking it. That's completely fine. It's doable. I'm just saying, like, if you guys can start earlier, it helps. But like, like I'm saying, like, it, it happens. You don't have enough time. Life happens. You just have to take a step back from everything and do you. So that being said, let's move on to y'all's questions. Um, so I will, I'll give you guys, I'll put like 15 minutes on the timer or 10 minutes on the timer since I don't want to hold you guys too long. And um, any questions are open and you can ask any one of us. Feel free to unmute. Otherwise, it's super hard for those wa watching the recording just to be like, what's happening? Like, who's asking questions? Like, nothing makes sense. Yeah, I had a um, question or comment. So we're in this week one and now we've started, I think they've gotten the memo about a bit of, um, the fact that I guess maybe previous terms mentioned that it was a little unorganized because the professors have been, looks like they've been trying to put the objectives, they put the objectives in the slides and in all this fancy stuff. We were like, okay. Um, but so, and I am noticing that this first week has been a lot of anatomy with Toledo. So um, I guess, especially with all the images. So I'm assuming that with the anatomy, yeah, a lot of, yeah, a lot of, a lot of images. And so I'm assuming the anatomy is gonna be, there's gonna be a lot of images that we're supposed to be able to pick out things and disorders there. So how, and then also like I'm thinking about whiteboarding and drawing, like how, do, like the hardest thing I found is like, how do I draw a brain? Like, and how do you draw, you know, like I, I can't draw that, but like, how do we do that with the anatomy? I just want to make like a couple of quick comments. You guys have Toledo. I'm honestly considering dropping out just to do term two again. <laughs> oh, like, you guys didn't have Toledo. We we oh. we like basically learned all the anatomy by ourselves. So I'm not even I'm not even lying. Okay. Like um, Toledo's fantastic. I'm okay. going to tell you guys if there's one professor's office hours that you need to show yeah. up in, 
it's his office hours because he will make you learn that material. I don't care if you have to sing. I don't care if you ha have to like stay dance. Up till 10 it, then yep, he stay up till 10 o'clock. He will, he will make sure that you know, I don't know, your epidural hemorrhages, subdural hemorrhages, all of that jazz. If he's teaching you anatomy, he will make sure he's a fantastic professor and he's a okay. fantastic neurosurgeon. So what I'm going to say is, you guys are already lucky in terms of what you can do to memorize the anatomy of it. I think a couple of us already mentioned, like you are going to be using some external resources. I have linked out a lot of those resources already in this slide um, deck that I put, put together for you guys. Um, the folks on the panel, they are giving you guys some other good external resources. Take that into note, put it into practice. It's going to help. I'm not telling you guys, I'm a big drawer. Like if you guys have known all my stuff, like I love to draw, like it's nobody's business, but um, it is very time consumptive. So what I'm saying is take the images, take the slides from the lectures, superimpose it on a, I don't know, PowerPoint or a document or something, and then do your anatomy based off of that. Because remember at the end of the day, you are gonna be tested on SGU material. Everything that you use external is just to enhance your learning. So. Just keep that in mind. Um, what I did for anatomy specifically, what I had, I had like the anatomy, I used anatomy zone one. Um, I also used um, the noted anatomist. He is fantastic. He, he gives you a nice broad overview of every single lobe, every single function. Um, I think he even covers the embryo component, each of the pharyngeal arches, um, the cranial nerves associated with it. Those are quite difficult to memorize and any external resources that you can use to kind of enhance your learning with that is going to be super helpful. Um, I also took images of everything like the screenshots or whatever you had to do and I put it onto a separate document and I just like colored it in and I said okay like this part is covered by the middle cerebral artery. This part posterior cerebral, this is anterior cerebral. And then I don't know, like I started doing like um, the circle of Willis drawing after that, and then things spiraled out of control. But um, the important thing to note is that anatomy has to be drawn out. It has to be practiced. It has to be put into some kind of medium that's digestible because um, it's, it's difficult to put it in like a 2D PowerPoint and like walk away knowing a good chunk of it. Yeah, I will. I yeah, good. Good thing you brought that up, Kishore. Like, I kid you not. Okay, first with the whole embryo with the pharyngeal arches. Let me tell you, those are easy, easy, easy points. If you memorize that table they give you, you will be like those are easy. Like those are the questions that I look forward to because they're just so easy and it's like quick. Give me a you know plus two points. Second, like Kishore said. Don't be afraid to use like other means of studying. Like you clearly need to draw it out. Like forget about even just like on like a tech level, like using an iPad, like straight up like paper. Let me draw the circle of Willis, anything that gets you going. If you, like in my room, I have like one of these like giant mirrors, draw, like draw all the time, every day. You will be solid if you draw it out. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Priya, what's up? Uh, I was what's just going to add, like, what, to what you were saying, Keisha. Like, um, I like drawing, but, you know, I'm, like, a perfect, like, you know, I like my drawings nice, so I can't, like, you know, just whatever. So what I would do is just copy and paste how Keisha said and just, like, block the names. Like, you know, if it's pointing to the hippocampus, I'll just block that and then just practice that every day, too, um, if, if you guys don't want to draw. Um, but, yeah, that's my little tip up there. Yeah, we have some good advice. What other questions you guys got? Throw it at us. You still have nine minutes on the clock. Go. I had a quick question regarding like making the tables. Uh, do you have like a specific format as which or as how you make the tables or could we kind of see like how you make them possibly? Uh, sure. Give me one second. I also... Yeah, give me one second. Yeah, we can all show ours as well. Um, because I think I have mine up as well. After you're done, for sure. Okay. 
Okay, obviously what you're looking at is not your term specific material, um, but these tables, like how it's laid out is a great kind of format. I didn't have my NB one pulled up. Um, I do apologize for that, but I like to keep it very broad and general, like, you know, take a disorder, put it in the leftmost column, get the relevant facts, right? Is it like a clinical feature? Like is a patient coming in, I don't know, like a thunderclap headache or um, versus, I don't know, like a slow progressive, like coma that's being on set. Then I would put in like the images and then I would finally put in something else. Like that's like extraneous information. And that way I, it's like a nice straight flow. Um, obviously you guys have seen my compiled notes and they they tend to be quite busy but they have all of the little minutia and detail that is given for each of the um, modules and I will I'll let the other folks kind of share and show you guys what they have as well yeah I can show my nb3 one and like how like I organize that hold on okay so this can everyone see my screen I did, is, was that a yes? That is a yes. Okay, sorry, I I didn't. Okay, so this is like some like how how NB three is approached is you're gonna learn categories of diseases, right? So the first one you might start off is like your OCDs, right? So everything from OCD to BDD. So how I how I did it was first like meaning and criteria. A lot of these things are very criteria based. So like you know two plus symptoms in this in this category. Next, I will move on to like details. This is specifically just like for me to help me understand. Like it varies from person to person. And then the third part I might put is something like treatment or some random things that, you know, are not, might not have like a table on their own. But again, it, it depends on how, how you wanna do it like yourself. So. This is how I did like for the rest of them, like you might have like subtypes of being something or like little buzzwords, but like I did this for each like disorder. Like when you go back to like trauma, like you will see like, oh, there's a lot of like numbers, like, oh, nine plus symptoms of this category. So if you don't have like all of them like listed out, like if, you know, you might just end up going back to your notes. Like for me specifically, I hated having to go back to my notes. So my table was obviously like a little bit more detailed um, just because let's say, for example, like how Kishore was mentioning about diuretics. Let's say if something is makes the body hyperkalemic, right? Let's say if I just put, you know, it makes it hyperkalemic, like maybe I might not know like why. So if it's something that's like difficult or like something odd, like I will put the explanation right then too, because I don't want to have to go back into my notes and find it all over again, um, like why something works that way. So again, like it depends, like how detailed or how sparse you want to be. If you want to be completely sparse, you can just put, okay, nine plus symptoms in this category. These are the lists of subtypes and that's about it. But like I said, there's it it how it depends on how you study and what um, is the best way to organize it. And I think these lectures are done by Dr. Kirkby and Dr. Vinny. So within the within the lecture itself, I think will also be like very organized. Like you'll see the same things over and over again. You, they'll have like a slide on symptoms, um, subtypes, like what's the number. So it already does that, that organization like for you. So it makes it much easier to understand. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. We have four minutes on the clock. Any other questions? Yeah, I had a question. Um, so I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed with everything that we've kind of been hit with in this first week. And I've read in a couple of different places and like a couple of people have told me from like upper terms that basically like if I don't have that good of a grasp on the stuff that we get in the first week, like it'll be taught later on and that I shouldn't put too much emphasis on like worrying about it. Is that true? Like if I'm not like able to grasp everything this first go around or like if I'm not able to get to every DLA, like is that okay or should I really bog down this weekend and try to like get through everything 
To be honest, um, when I was going through NB1, I spent a lot of time going over the details of everything. And sure, it gave me a solid foundation. But I do, I, I can say like I overstudied for a certain portions of like NB and their DLAs. And I'm, I'm, I'm putting a little asterisk on it because there are points that are gonna come up again in NB2 that are based off of NB1. And by that point, they expect you to somewhat know it. For example, like when you get to um, the cranial nerves and the arteries and blood supply overall that's coming out of the optic canal. Like they will, they will ask you that, but it was covered in a DLA during NB1 already. So if you have that like kind of understanding going forward that everything is going to start compounding, it kind of, um, well, yes, it's going to make it feel a little overwhelming, but I would want you to do your level best to keep it as simple as possible with the material that you're going through, right? Don't spend a um, huge amount of time you know, going over every nitty gritty details, um, Saisha and Priya knows I love my details and uh, it sometimes traumatizes them too much, but um, it helps me learn it in a way that it will stick with me forever. That's just me. And that's my very individual opinion. Um, but as someone who didn't have a strong background in anatomy and a lot of different, because um, I'm, I'm coming from a different field from most of the folks that, you know, come into medical school. Um, but when I went through anatomy, I learned it. Like if I saw that image again, I will remember it. I can still tell you how like the globus pallidus looks versus the putamen versus the caudate nucleus. Like it's just etched into my brain. Like it's bad. It's that level of bad, like PTSD bad, but that's just me. And I'm going to say like, I'll let the other panelists tell you guys, it's, uh, important to know that you guys will continue to learn and compound on this information. Like kind of like what Keisha was saying, um, and kind of like um your question, Ayla. Like, um, I told like the first week, I'm like, what are we like? It because at least for us, it was kind of like disorganized. I'm like, what, you know, what is going on here? Um, because I I don't know if you guys have the same pick. Well, you guys have Toledo, so you guys are lucky. But we had like these little like pick like um I don't know MRIs or like you know gross images of like you know cuts, coronal cuts of the brain, and there'll be like little like you know, uh you know, identifications. I'm like, do we have to know this? And, you know, it was nowhere to be on our exam. So I was just like, why did I learn this? But um, yeah, like towards like the second week, it does make more sense. Everything kind of just comes together in terms of like, you know, um, if you relate it with like the descending pathway, ascending pathway, you kind of like know like, oh, okay, so this is like the hippocampus, it's going to go through this, and then the thalamus and all that stuff. So kind of right now, kind of get like a good general idea of like where everything is, um, because I think that's how you guys start off like, you know, here's this and, you know, this is where, you know, the brain is and blah, blah, blah. Um, and then it kind of just goes on top, like they'll just put tracks on top of the brain, basically. And then that's how they kind of um, organize it that way. So yeah, so right now just have like a general idea of like what's going on and um, know like what I did at least for the first week is kind of like hammer down on like where everything is, um, where the terminal bulb is and all that stuff and then um, learning the tracks as they go on. Yeah, I, I agree with um, Priya as well. I, after that first week, I, I honestly didn't know what to focus on how much detail, how not little detail, because I do remember the professor saying, don't worry about it by week two or week three, this would make sense. But knowing the type of person I am, I just could not wait until then. So what I did do and what I probably should have done more of is like what Priya said is get a whole general thing. Like think about it in terms of big picture, like, you know, what is essentially the point of this? right like don't get bogged down in the little details those details i promise you will come and they will be nitpicky so at this point think about it in terms of general big term especially if it's on something that's you know like anatomy is not my my forte so obviously like i had to spend much more time being like okay this is what a hemisphere is oh okay this is what the temporal lobe is doing Okay, that makes a little bit more sense. Like, you don't have to do like, you know, let me make thorough notes on every like video that I see. By all means, don't do that. You're going you're gonna to get bogged down. 
But just like, you know, like I said, Anatomy Zone, I think, does a really great job. It's very concise, like to the point. I'm the type of person that likes it concise and to the point. If it's if it's too much going on, I will not understand it. Um, and I think, you know, that person just makes it a really good big picture conceptual type. If you understand right now, hey, this is the big concept. When that time comes for the whole pathways, you will be much able to understand, oh, okay, we're at the midbrain level. So that means I'm not going to see this specific anatomical feature that might be present in another cross section, either above or below this level. That's something that I didn't grasp until like after week three. Anatomy, anatomy, make friends with anatomy. Thank you guys yeah. so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, anatomy is going to be your best friend, um, especially when you're getting started with NB. That is time on the question and answers. I will, I can definitely stick um, after the kind of the session and the recording to answer a couple of more questions. But I did want to tell you guys, um, I went ahead and compiled a whole bunch of resources that I use personally. This is coming from me, myself, Kishore. Um, but the folks that are on the panelists have put together a couple of more um, resources that they've linked it out in the chat. So feel free to look at the chat as well. Um, but these helped me a lot in terms of everything, like the noted anatomist, his like just general description, like it's an eight minute video that covers like a whole bunch of stuff with like what lobe, what part embryologically uh, originates from, right? Like, cause they really like to know like your midbrain versus like your diencephalon, try it. Like it's, it gets very nitpicky, but he keeps it very simple and understandable. Um, so give a, give, feel free to watch this, give it a watch when you guys can. Um, especially this weekend when you're doing your weekend review sessions. Okay. Um, Ninja Nerd, oh my God. I swear, this dude took the entire NB module by the horns and just delivered it and landed it like a freaking Olympic gold medalist gymnast. But like, it's freaking awesome. He covered the entire tracks, entire pathway. Um, because I'm a person who needs to see the big picture from top to bottom before I get into like the slices, right? Like I need to know like what part of the brain I'm going to see like this thing versus something else. The next thing is um, CK Med. This dude was awesome. He covered all of the cranial nerves based off of what I needed to know for each of them, where they cross over, where they go and innervate. Super helpful. I use it all the time, um, especially for NB2. Um, OSCEs, I know that's coming up for you guys and it's an online thing. So what you need to do is review the OSCE link that I sent you guys. These are all OSCEs, right? Like, sorry, these are all linked out to the various YouTube and resources that we use. Um, and that OSCE is particularly awesome. Um, it covers everything that you need to know from like, I don't know, general like abdomen assessments all the way to like cranial nerves. Um, Ninja Nerd also has one. I put it right here for your NB2. And then the Utah Med, this one is a little bit challenging for a lot of folks who are using Macs and other stuff because you need to download Flash and whatnot, but it's really helpful. If you can't use that, then use CK Med. He covers all of the pathways anyway for you guys. As always, I, link, like, I can't give you guys links to Boards and Beyond because those are things you have to buy yourself. Um, and osmosis, but they're super helpful. Um, I use them myself in NB1 and then two and then three. Um, osmosis, I particularly remember using for NB1. Um, Boards and Beyond was fantastic for a little bit of the psych components. And if you guys see, I haven't linked out a whole bunch of psych resources because SGU does a fantastic job of teaching psych anyway, that I wouldn't even worry about um, you guys having to spend uh, time covering like your psych material from external resources. The professors are fantastic. The lectures are delivered um, to the T. Just go based off of those, make those tables and you will be fine. And that about wraps it up. Thank you guys for coming. I will stick around for you know a couple of more minutes answering any questions, but all the T4s are kind of all panic and no disco right now as we prepping for our CRS exam. So um, we will stay behind. I mean, I will personally, but um, thank you guys for coming. Good luck with NB. Feel free to message us. Um, we have a lot of resources and uh, we're happy to share them.